Hello, welcome to my newest Let's Play series. This one is going to be Cursed Loot. Some of you may have seen my video introduction to Cursed Loot a few weeks ago. Basically, it's a fairly traditional type of roguelike, although it's a bit more accessible and uh, lightweight, I suppose, than a lot of old, serious, po-faced grindy roguelikes. It's still insanely hard, I've never got anywhere near beating it. But it is a bit more accessible and easy to play, I think. Um, plus it's a lot prettier. That might seem like an odd thing to say, because it's hardly graphically lavish, but anyway. Um, that's enough laboured intro, so let's just press on with it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if my current game's lost. Let's go. The classic experience, normal difficulty. Uh, now what shall I go with? Berserker has a spin attack that clears out or does damage to the area around you. Freeze that stops nearby enemies. Mechanical ally. Inflict poison damage. Regen from the start. Nothing. No special powers. I think I'll go with the Tinkerer because I quite like having the mechanical orb with me. So here's our intro story for what it's worth. Goodness, it looks like Mother has drugged me and buried me alive again. Oh, how she loves to play tricks on me. Tee hee. But oh, what a perfect place to test my latest invention. Here we go. Oh, and thrown straight into the action, being pincer manoeuvred by rats. God. Ah. Okay, I need to get clear of these rats. Summon my mechanical orb. Ugh. In a second, I'll explain what's going on, but these rats really blindsided me. Ah, get back. Okay. You can see in the top right, we have the four face buttons represented, and Y is illuminated. That's because Y has my current special power equipped to it, and that is the ability to summon a mechanical orb to help me out. Right, we've leveled up. Okay, that'll give me a, a quick break to cover what's going on. Basically, we have to trawl through, I think it's 50 floors of this dungeon. And they're randomly generated every time you play, so they're never the same twice. And that's kind of why I wanted to play this for the next Let's Play. I thought, even if I get killed early on each time, it should at least not be too repetitive. So, um, with the Tinkerer, we can summon a mechanical orb to help us fight the enemy. But so far, not doing very well. Level up means we can upgrade our stats. Since I've taken a lot of damage and already used one of the three health potions I started with, let's whack up my defense a great deal. Okay. Um, health potions are easily used in this game because you just pull the right trigger. They're permanently assigned to the right trigger, so you have easy access to them in a crisis. Alright, so trawling around, picking up gold and loot. Oh, a chest! Open it by pulling the left trigger. See what's inside. Health potion 85 gold pieces. That's quite a nice haul at this early stage of the game. Okay, you can see my orb doing a number on these rats. Frying them. I can also detonate the orb by pressing Y again to do some area damage. But, of course, there's a, a bit of a delay before I can summon another orb, so I don't do that very often secret door. For the first few floors the game will point out secret doors to you, but thereafter you have to spot odd looking sections of wall for yourself. To those that dare brave the depths of this dungeon, beware! Death is permanent and rather unfortunate. Keep a good stock of health potions and your finger on the right trigger. Only the strong shall survive, but you have the skills and cunning necessary to forge a path to victory. From the management. Thanks for that encouragement. Oh my god. Okay, the game is not showing us any mercy here. God, I can't remember the last time this game really just kept hammering away at me from the very instant I entered the first floor. Okay, that question mark there means some kind of encounter, so let's see what it is. Stone sarcophagus etched with elaborate markings. You wonder what riches might be hidden within. Uh, you never know which way these are going to go. It could 
curse you or start a fight, or it could give you something good for free. Ah, well, let's rob the grave. The lid crashes to ground. Poor grammar there. Oversight, I hook games. The lid crashes to the ground, shattering into a thousand stone fragments. We peer inside, bats come flying out into our face, turning us into Batman, scarring us forever. Or rather, revealing Dracula. He is not amused. Oh, sorry, Vampire Queen Victoria. My mistake. Die, foul creature. So we have to fight all these bats. Shit! Heal. God. Okay, that didn't last very long. Let's have another go straight away, since that was so brief. I think that is probably the shortest run I've ever had in this game. Well, the Tinkerer didn't seem to go so well, so let's go for a meatier, more fighty, combaty type. Take the Berserker. Maybe he'll be a bit tougher. Oh, me aching head! I don't know why I'm voicing him like a pirate, but just roll with it. I haven't had a hangover this bad since me sixth bachelor party. This being me seventh, of course. Arr, good times. Oh, I predicted the R. Well, my instinct for barbarian voices is clearly very good. Anyway, good times. Now, where might I be? No matter, me trusty blade will guide me back home. You're going to follow your sword home. You are a moron. Anyway, adventure awaits. See, this is a more normal beginning. You usually get a couple of enemies trickling in, not two dozen of them bombarding you from all sides. We've got them in a doorway here. That's always a nice situation because it funnels them down to just one at a time instead of enabling them to surround you. You can attack diagonally as well. Always useful. Grab this gold. Okay, there's the exit, but make sure we've cleared out all the gold and loot from this floor before we move on. Mysterious potion. Most of the items you pick up will be mysterious, <laughs> and you have to identify them at some point. Level up. Okay, well we're doing a lot better so far. Add a bit of defense, but I think mainly add some damage so we can become a real powerhouse. Pick up a health potion, always a nice find. Okay... Battle these rats. You can see in the top right, this time our special power is the B button one, which is this kind of circular swing, which I'll show off next time I'm surrounded. Health potion and 90 gold pieces. Another nice haul. Okay, mysterious scroll. Battle some more rats. Another scroll. Okay, let's just head for the exit. I think we're pretty much done with this floor. Let's head down. Level 2. Okay. Oh god, we walked on the weird little poison volcano things and we got poisoned. Never good. Okay, here we go. There. Did you see the sort of circular spin thing? It's very flash. Ugh. Get back. A ruby. I think that's probably worth nothing but money. But that's fine, that'll be useful when we eventually find a shop. Ugh. Okay, that's the the um, headstone of our last character, the Tinkerer. We're able to read it, I believe. You discover the grave of Scion of Tea. That's me. And take a few moments to honour your fallen comrade. As you step away, you notice his club lying, lying nearby. It will serve you better than him now. Yeah, that's a nice feature that was introduced. This game used to be Epic Dungeon, but iHook Games wanted to update it, and for some reason they couldn't just add updates to Epic Dungeon, so they had to release it as a whole new game, Cursed Loot. And one of the features I like that they introduced is when you reach the location where your previous character died, one of their items will be lying there. But it seems to be chosen at random, so it's a, it could be something really crappy. Or, if you had some awesome kit, it may well be a piece of your awesome kit. Okay, mystery encounter here, let's have a look. A group of off-duty goblins playing cards. Well, let's join them. Fancy bit of snap. Off-duty, happy to have us join the game. And we can just play straight, or we can play and try to cheat. That could be asking for trouble, but I feel like this guy's a dishonest barbarian. Let's do it. Oh, they caught me and I lost a luck stat! And I have to fight them. Ah, That's annoying. And it's cost me a health potion as well. Oh, and I used the health potion just before I leveled up. That was clumsy. Oh well. Add some more defense. Restore my solitary luck point. And some more damage. And this time, 
with this new level, we managed to gain a skill as well. So you can see the one on the right there is the one we already have, Frenzy, which spins us in a circle. But there are other things we can add as well. I don't think I've ever used Thorns. I'm not entirely clear on what it does. I think maybe it, it damages enemies when they hit you, perhaps. That makes you stealthy. Meh. Increases your ability to see stuff. Meh. Stat boost is fine, but it also seems like a bit of a waste, in a way. So, I usually, when I don't have any points of regen, I like to get at least one regen to allow our health to regenerate a little bit when we're not taking too much damage to counteract it. Okay. At this point, let's have a quick look at our equipment, see if we picked up anything useful. Lots of mysterious stuff. Uh, we only have one identify scroll, so we can identify one of these items. I think I'm going to hold on until we reach a shop, at which point we should be able to identify all of them for a small fee. Okay, I think we've pretty much cleaned out this floor, so let's descend. Level 3. And the environment's changed, as you can see. Not so cave-like now, more like a some kind of underground mansion. Pick out more mysterious stuff, another secret door. Oh, slot machine. I'm not sure I really want to play this. I'll give it one go and see how that works out. One go, I think, actually lets you get three spins. Is it two spins? Yeah, two spins. Well, that didn't work out. I'm not wasting any more money on it. Bollocks to you, slot machine. Okay, let's head up here. And in true roguelike fashion, we have no idea what the layout of the floor is until we explore it for ourselves. Okay, there's the exit. That's fine. Try this door. This game also has a feature that you generally don't see in other roguelikes, which is your lamp. Um, you can see in the bottom left there, the lamp's down to 62%. That basically is your range of visibility. The more your lamp burns down, the the less visibility you have. And you have to re refill it with lantern oil. But we haven't had a chance to buy any lantern oil yet, because we haven't seen a shop. Okay, let them follow me into the corridor to funnel them down to one at a time. One of my favourite strategies for this game. Okay, oh, God. Loads of potions, loads and loads and loads of potions, but no weapons, no armor, and no shop. I feel like we're. like we have a bad draw here. Get back! I feel like we're having an unlucky run. Okay, kill this lot. Yes, I know pull RT to use a health, health potion. Okay, what about that cloak? Will that give us any sort of protection? Our dungarees there give us defense 2. Cloak gives us also defense 2. So, probably not worth bothering with. We could take a gamble on one of these mystery potions and just see what it does, but that's as likely to harm you as help you. And there's a shop there! That's useful. But first, let's deal with the stat increases. I'm not sure what these all do. I mean, I know what damage and defense do. Luck is a bit nebulous, and dexterity, I have no idea. So I'll just keep pumping them into defense and damage at this point. Head to the shop. And finally, we can identify all our mystery items for uh, 135 gold. You'll see it says in the top right there. That's a bit steep, but okay. Need to know what they all are. So, what's that? Remove Cursed Scroll. Could be useful if we equip a Cursed Item, but at the moment not a lot of use, so sell it. Magic Map. I hardly ever use a Magic Map, so log that. Cloak can go. Dire Poison. Don't want to drink that. Sell it. Scroll of Ill Omen. Don't even know what it does. Sell it. Identify Scroll. A second one. That's useful. Uh, dire Poison can go. Liquid Experience. I'll drink that in a minute. Dire Poison drink me. I think the last time I drank a drink me potion it killed me so I'm going to sell that. And potion of levitation could be handy but I don't think I've ever found a use for it so sell it. But, ah! Go back to the shop. Okay, sell the club. 
I'll drink liquid experience in a second, but first I want to sort my crap. I want to buy some more health potions, because those things are like gold dust. And buy some more lantern oil as well. Um, can I afford... Uh, I only have 237 gold left. I don't think I can afford an armor upgrade. Or a better weapon. But I can buy this wooden amulet that will increase our luck. Gold ring will increase our dexterity. Ah, that one. Can I afford that? No! 300! I can't quite. Oh, well, I haven't sold the ruby though. Okay, sell that. No, still not quite enough. Oh well. I will buy the gold ring for 100 gold and the wooden amulet for 100 gold. Give me a little stat boost on my luck, my defense, and my damage. So pop out of there, equip them quickly before the enemies descend upon me, and scarf the liquid experience potion. You feel more experienced! <laughs> uh, lots of drinks have that effect on me. And then, launch into battle! Go! Go! Arr! Thank you. That didn't go too badly. Alright. Well, I think we're about done with this floor. So let's head back for the stairs down. Oh, shit. Let's head back for the stairs down. And press on. Okay, that's been a 15 minute or so video. So I'll call a halt there. And I'll ask you to rejoin me the next time for more Cursed Loot. Thanks for watching. See you then.